Would you like to become an investigative reporter and find really cool newspaper articles about your ancestors? Great, you've come to the right place. Today, we're gonna to talk about keyword researching in newspapers using newspapers.com. Howdy, my name's Devin Noel Lee, and this is Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand DNA, climb your family's tree, and learn how to write the stories about your ancestors. If this is the, your first time here, consider subscribing. Now, previously on this channel, we've talked about the basics of using newspapers.com in your research. And then if you find newspaper clippings, how to transfer them from newspapers.com, over to your ancestry member tree. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to use keywords to find really cool articles about your family. Now, how are you going to do keyword researching on newspapers.com? Well, the first thing you wanna do is type in a keyword right in this field. So I'm going to take and type in a keyword. You can type in names, which we typically think of, but I'm gonna type in a place, in fact, a specific place called Holy Cross Church. Then I'm gonna press search and see what comes up. I have found over 11 million matches. Holy Cross just isn't that uh, uncommon of a name, is it? So now what I need to do is drill down into the specific area where Holy Cross Church was located. Holy Cross Church was located in Ohio. So I'm gonna click down to Ohio and I can see a lot of entries for Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, um, and the like, Springfield, Ohio. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit my location. Now I know that Holy Cross is in Columbus, Ohio. So instead of just filtering down to Ohio, I'm going to put in Columbus, Ohio and press search. And now this is really exciting. I see entries for Columbus, Ohio in 1868, 1866, 1868, 1864. Now this is a little bit after when some of my ancestors lived in Columbus, Ohio and attended Holy Cross Church. But I can zoom in and I can peek at some of the cool entries I'm gonna find. So the Holy Cross Church and all of these churches, they're going to form a procession. Isn't that really cool? So we can see some of the activities that Holy Cross was involved in as um, Catholic church members there in Columbus in 1868. Now, some of you are going to have ancestors that were ordained or con confirmed. And if we look at this entry, we're going to see the ordination of Reverend Bernard Hildebrand up there at the top, and then also confirmation services and instructions there uh, as well. So does it mean that you're always going to find your ancestor connected with specific records? Not necessarily, but you can start adding the social history that makes newspapers super fun. Now my ancestor, my papa, he was part of the Swan Club in Columbus, Ohio. So you can use the keyword of a specific organization. So Swan Club, Columbus, Ohio. And here we can go in 1969, he was alive then, and we can click on this article and we can see Swan Club Officers for 1969. Um, it's a popular South Side Sports Club. Ah, oh, finally, I know what this Swan Club is. Originally, I thought it was just a service organization and there probably are elements to that service, um, to the club, the sports club that's involved with uh, service, but it's really sports club, which explains some of the pictures that I have in my family photo album of my papa wearing a swan club jacket and playing sports. Additionally, I might, if I'm lucky, find a picture. Well, that one's not all that great. It happens when you're scanning 
reproduced images in that way. But can you imagine if your ancestor was in a club, but they weren't named, but they had this picture in a newspaper? So go and look for organizations. You never know what you're going to find. I'm going to do just one more because why not? So my grandmother, Helen, was part of the Eastern Star chapter in Columbus, Ohio. It was affiliated with the Masons. So sometimes we have blanks, don't we? She was affiliated with the Masons. And look, I can see some of the activities that the um, Eastern Stars did. I can see where they're meeting, their chapter number, and I can get lots of more specifics that I can then go contact the organization, the head organization, if they tell me about this group. You'll also find um, different articles about when they participated in various social service organizations, or check this out. Um, here is an obituary where this person was a member of the Eastern Star. This could be one of the people that my grandmother knew. How cool is that? Okay, so you can put in names, which we've talked about in other videos. You can put in churches, you can put in organizations, but what about divorces? I know, people look for birth, marriage, and death, but you can also look for divorce information. So I'm going to look for newspapers to talk about Fronauer and divorce. Now Frank Fronauer was my grandmother's brother-in-law, and he was married to my grandmother's sister. They got divorced and he remarried, and I'm still trying to figure out when my great aunt divorced Frank Fronauer. Maybe newspapers can help me. Let's find out. So now that I have typed in Fronauer divorce, I need to um, make this timeline reflect the time period for Frank. Now Frank lived in 19, uh, he was married to my aunt in about 1940. So I'm gonna bring this up to 1970 in that time frame, just to peel off some of these more modern Fronauers. So as I scroll through, I actually have to go way to the bottom here. And when I click on this one right here, I find a divorce record for Frank Fronauer. So answering the suit of Frank Fronauer flied, filed September from Florence C. Fronauer. And notice that the date up here is 1918. Do I have the wrong Fronauer? No. I found his dad. His dad was divorced from his mom and Frank was rather young. So you find these little tidbits when you are looking for one person, you tend to find other stories that you didn't even know to look for. So now I'm going to look for a new keyword. I'm gonna combine the last name Townley with police officer because my great grandfather Richard Townley was a police officer. Now I could put in his name Richard Townley, but it doesn't always come up with anything useful when I do that. So instead I'm just gonna pick Townley because what if he's listed as Officer Townley? I could try Officer Townley, but today I'm just gonna start with Townley and police officer. Now I have a lot of hits for Townley police. But then I'm going to decrease the year using the handles and get more specific to 1906 because he died shortly before 1906, so we're not going to find anything about him in the newspapers. Now right here you can see a clipping where I actually found him previously, but I want to show you something else that I found about him. Now this is the entry that I want to show you this one from 1866. And sometimes you have to keep searching through hints after hints to find something interesting, but at least you can get through hundreds of years of records very quickly. Where was the private watchman? Officers Townley and Hulbert in their rounds yesterday morning discovered the door of the millinery store of Mrs. Fitzgerald on Fifth Street between Elm and Plum standing open. This is a really cool story. And it was all because I put the Townley in there, but there's no policeman. 
It didn't even pick up this word over here. So I think that's kind of interesting that sometimes you put in police and you get to the uh, record you're looking for and it's on the same page, but not very close. So it is fun to go ahead and because this is, seems like a whole rap sheet of police reports. Um, but the other thing you could do is go back and put in office, Officer Townley. And now you can see that, oh, maybe I should type in Officer Townley. So try occupations and then go and try titles if you have various um, titles belonging to your ancestors. Did your ancestor have a business in a specific location? Then type in the name of the business, in this case, Long Pharmacy and in Columbus, Ohio. And when I zoom in, oh, I just see Long Pharmacy Druggist in a location. But what? what is going on? There's all these people listed here. And as I scroll around, I see this is can you see it? This is a list of where you can find pin money chocolates. How cool is that? So not only was Long Pharmacy a place where you could get your medicines, you could also pick up some chocolates along the way. Do you happen to know the name of the ship that your ancestors sailed to America on? Well, why don't you consider typing in the name of the ship? And don't put a specific location. Granted, you're going to see a lot of entries, but remember, it's a ship. It's going to go lots of places. Well, my ancestor came to America in about 1854. So I'm going to narrow down to 1854, maybe even 1856. And I'm going to look for things like sales, Liverpool. That makes sense because the Anne Lang sailed from Bremen to Maryland, so it's quite likely it stopped off in England. So here I have that the, the vessel sailed and I could read this article to figure out, oh, so they're going through in 1826 that Anne Lang is making these, these uh, continental journeys from continent to continent and around. And it's 1826, so what does that tell me? That this ship, it could, the one my ancestors sailed on, could be a second rendition of the Anne Lang ship, or he sailed on a ship that was over 30 years old. Isn't that interesting? So I also searched for Anne Lang and put the word ship in it, and I was able to find this really cool article that talks about the measurement of goods were taken by the clipper, the ship, and Lang for Brenman, and then it gives a little more information about the facts of the ship and what it was transporting in 1854. That information tells me that the ship that my ancestor sailed on was a clipper ship. So then I can go and research what is a clipper ship, what would it have looked like in 1854, and I know just about uh, what kinds of things this ship is transporting in addition to passengers. How cool is that? Now, sometimes you will want to type in birth in a specific place. But I'm going to type in birth, and I'm going to look in Kentucky. And there are some really cool articles that you can pick up when you're searching in this way. Now, when you keep things broad, again, you're not always looking for your ancestors, but you're learning for facts about your ancestors. Let's say that your ancestor was born in Kentucky, maybe even around Louisville, Kentucky, in 1855. You may not always be able to find their name, but look, there were, in 12 months, there was 25,000 births in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, you can take those numbers and see just how many births is that compared to other places in the United States or around the world in 1855. Is that high? Is that low? Who knows? You just have to start digging and add more of the picture to your ancestor's story. Now, sometimes your ancestors are not going to be listed by their surnames at all. And you will need to put in birth, girl, and notice this article that I found. Some babies 
Milford Bracken County, Kentucky is situated on the North Fork of the Licking River and is quite a pleasant and populous little village. Recently in the neighborhood, two ladies gave birth to three boys each. So really that's six babies for two women. And then another lady in the county gave birth to two girls. We understand that the six boys are radicals and the girls democratic. The democracy will have to do better down there. <laughs> so we don't really know who these um, ancestors are, but can you imagine that if you happen to discover that you have ancestors that had children in late April or May in Milford, Bracken County, Kentucky, they could have been in this article. When you're doing keyword research on newspapers.com, sometimes you will put in things like birth, but you won't put in a surname because as you saw, the surname isn't always included. Sometimes you will put in a surname in events such as divorce. You might have to scroll a while, but you could find the instance of the divorce for your relative or someone, your relative's relative. Then you can also use keywords such as the names of places, such as churches, businesses, organizations that your ancestors were a part of, and more. I hope this gives you a little insight on how you can do keyword research using newspapers.com. Don't just look for surnames in newspapers. You can be overlooking the stories that you want to find. Be sure to go and try out these strategies, then come back and bring your questions or your cool finds. See you next time.